Hi, Rex here at RW Mods. Today we're going to look at the something really simple, the carb restrictor. Originally I hadn't really thought of doing a video on this, but there's quite a few people online um, asking what they do and what's the optimum size and you know should they retune and stuff. So I thought I'd do a quick little video. Hopefully this doesn't end up too long. Uh, most most carbs, at least race engine carbs, come with a removable restrictor and you just um, kind of pull it out. Sometimes you can use the pliers but it could scratch it up a little bit. Most of them come out too, pretty easy. There's a couple O-rings on there. They just hold that in there. They don't really seal anything because your your air cleaner boot is out here and so all the air in there should be clean. So it uh, the O-rings just kind of help it hold in there. Uh, there's Plastic um, is kind of normal in some RTRs and, and some of the some of the engines, and some come with aluminum. You can buy um, other sizes in aluminum. I don't think there's really a performance difference between them, other than um, some of the aluminum ones have machined have a little bit of a radius on there, where this plastic one's a little sharp at the bottom. So you could take a knife and kind of deburr that a little bit with the plastic one. Uh, some RTR carbs might not come with one, or some some engines in general might not come with one, and uh, or even some RTR ones kind of have a radius inside there, kind of mimic, mimicking the the carb restrictor, and you can't put one, you can't change them in that one. But but most carburetors come with. Uh, with a, or at least able to put a restrictor in. Um, I think it's better, like I've seen some drag race guys, like several, when I did some drag race engines, guys wouldn't run them at all. And I think, I think you're better off going to uh, the biggest size possible in that case. So you would want to measure your your through diameter of the carb, your your smallest diameter of the carb, and then go with, you know, say uh, most Novorossi's like this are really close to 8 millimeters. So then go with the 8 millimeter restrictor. I think you're getting a smoother flow uh, down in the carb. It kind of goes down, you know, and it kind of mimics this. It co comes down and then it has that angle. Um, so I, I think it's kind of a little bit of a sharp angle. I think if you went with an 8 millimeter um, restrictor, it would be a little smoother flow in there. But probably pretty minimal. Now, carb restrictors have uh, different sizes. Most of them are written on it. Uh, this one's a 6.5. Uh, we got some. This one's a, uh, what is it? 9 millimeter. That one's a big one. You see the difference there. And, and the, the purpose of the carb restrictor is pretty, pretty simple. Is the, the smaller the hole, the more restriction you have. Um, so it, so you can play around with uh, tuning your your engine, you know, at a certain track. If you're an off-road racer, I like to stick between a six and a half and eight on the on a off-road engine. Depends on the engine. Um, you should gain mileage uh, with with going to a, a smaller restrictor, but not always. I have found that if I get if I've tried some like five, five and a half. I made some quite a few years ago. Made them like five or five and a half millimeters, and I didn't, I didn't see really a, a gain, probably even a loss in mileage. So it, it, uh, what I was kind of seeing at that time was you were in the throttle more, so you. You had a smaller restrictor, so your engine had less power, so then you were opening the throttle more most times around the track. Um, so you're using more fuel. And I found anything really under 6.5, I mean, you can always play around and, and try it for yourself. This is just my findings, but uh, anything under 6.5 kind of tuned funny. Engine got kind of warm, didn't make any power, the fuel mileage didn't get better. So I, I think that you could uh, play around 
yourself, but I generally don't like anything under six and a half. A lot of times on my Truggy, um, most most engines I I run, I run a seven or seven and a half. You'll you'll notice with the like a six and a half is on the small side. I feel like the you get a little more throttle response with the six and a half. You get a little more velocity of the air going through the carb and you get you get a more of a low end power you definitely go into a eight or you know the biggest one you can get you're definitely going to see an increase in top end always but it does change the power band some and and like this one this carb if it's eight eight millimeters through hole and you put a nine in you're not going to gain any power there because the, the smallest part of the carb is the the most restriction there's some different kinds. Um, like I said, there's plastic and aluminum. This one's a Delrin one, and it came in an engine, I think, that I bought, used. I don't know who makes it. It's a little taller. Um, so it's a little taller, kind of more of a velocity stack, like like uh, one-to-one -one cars have. You know, they, I don't think on this it was a performance gain at all. But it was kind of a nice, nice machine. Uh, dollar in piece. The uh, I have seen them with some aftermarket ones with a uh, I don't know if it was a piece of metal. So you got basically a um, I'm trying to think. Like basically you had like a piece of metal across through the center, kind of a split it. And I think you put them in a certain way. I've never messed with those. My son, when he he used to always run like eight millimeter restrictor. And he felt like he got more bottom end with the with the eight millimeter restrictor, uh, which could be the case. It depends on the track, the driver, how you drive too. I mean, if you're one that just comes off the corner and you just pull wide, wide open throttle right away, um, you're going to be well. First of all, your fuel mileage is going to suffer, but then you kind of overload the engine um, with the you overload the engine with air. It's best when you come off the corner to just roll on the throttle. Just ease into it. You get less tire spin. Your mileage will improve. Um, and a lot of times, if you're struggling with a say a short run up double off a corner, um, you come around like a 180 and you got a short run up double and it's a little hard to make. Try just rolling on the throttle and it'll be a, it, you'll be amazed how much farther you can jump. Uh, using a little less throttle like that, I I found that myself, and it is it does take a little time to get used to that because you want to pull just pull the trigger, you think you're going to go faster, but you either spin the tires or just kind of overwhelm the engine by just opening it up. And going into fuel mileage, um, like I said, uh, you go to a smaller restrictor, you're generally going to get better fuel mileage. Uh, when you when you go to a smaller restrictor, most times you need to lean. The high speed needle. Usually the bottom, the low speed needle, you don't need to touch uh, with, with just changing. I mean, not always, but normally just the high speed needle. And I would say going from a seven and a half restrictor to a six and a half, you'd have to lean it, uh, lean it a couple hours maybe when you when you're going uh, like a millimeter. Generally, you want to start on the rich side. So let's say you put in the you know, you put in a, you had a six and a half in, you went to a seven and a half millimeter restrictor, richen it up a couple hours and then kind of retune from there. You might need to lean it slightly, but usually a couple hours either way. If you're going smaller restrictor, you want to lean it. If you're going bigger restrictor, you want to richen it just a couple hours and then kind of retune from there. See how that is. And with fuel mileage, there's, there's so many variables to, for fuel mileage to to even really you aren't just going to put a six and a half millimeter restrictor if you're using a seven and a half and gain a minute of runtime it's a combination of uh, your carb restrictor your pipe your engine there's there's a lot of variables and the biggest variable is the guy pulling the trigger and how far he's pulling it i know i I've heard like quite a few years ago, Adam Drake was really working on his mileage and he still is one of the best uh, with mileage. 
Um, he worked, you know, someone said when I was talking to him, they, they said he spent three hours at the track just trying different combinations, pipes and restrictors. Uh, but I think a lot of it, if you, if you did find out from him, it would be driving style. And, and there's pros. I've I've talked to guys before that, you know, they don't they don't pull wide open down the straightaway. They're at like, you know, a little more than three quarter or three quarter down the straightaway and try it sometime. Like if you instead of just pulling the trigger all the way, try just three quarter throttle down the straightaway, and you'll be surprised. You're almost going the same speed. In fact, some guys do set their endpoints so that they're not open all the way. Uh, going through like this carburetor, I said it had about an 8 millimeter. Usually most Novas uh, have an 8 millimeter. The, you know, there's some exceptions. There's some, I think there's some newer engines. Maybe the four ports and stuff have a little bit smaller one. I think the on-road ones have a bigger through hole. Uh, most, this is a Ninja carb, but it's uh, OS made. Most of those generally like this is uh, this this one has a nine millimeter through hole, and and kind of the standard um, the standard OS carb has a nine millimeter through hole. Now they also have some with quite a bit smaller through hole on them. I think that's the one they're having trouble tuning. Um, guys are getting flame outs. I, I just kind of heard some. I haven't tried that carb, or I've I've seen it when I worked on a few engines, but I didn't. I haven't personally ran that carb. These have always tuned pretty easy. The uh, the other thing I was going to say was, well, since I got this here, this is what I use for a throttle return spring, is uh, just the hair bands from, uh, from Walmart. You can buy a, I don't know if it's a 50 pack or a 100 pack for like three, four bucks. And they'll last you for 20 years or so. And I usually just uh, wrap them around. Um, this one, I don't even know. I don't think I put these on, but you wrap them around in a couple different areas. Sometimes you can hook your low-speed needle, like on this uh, on this Nova carb. You can hook that low-speed needle, and go like that. So usually I'll put two on there, and they don't last um, a real long time of their. I think the fuel kind of gets to them a little bit and softens them up and they'll break, but when you change your air cleaner or whatever, just replace it with a different one. That Usually that set comes with different ones, so I'll put like a short one there and a longer one all the way to the high-speed needle, like this. Uh, going back to mileage, like I said, a lot of it is the way you um, pull the trigger coming off the corner, um, pipe selection. There's a couple things uh, that Nova Rossi had some of these quite a few years ago, and it's an exhaust restrictor. And I saw one, and I, I thought, well, I can make some of those. So I, I made these maybe five years ago, maybe more. And it's a this is one I made, and it goes on your just basically between your pipes. So you'd have another gasket just like on your block on here, and then you'd. Uh, slide that on and then you have to stretch your springs a little bit small uh, stretch your springs a little bit more to get over there and it sort of looked like that it was a little bit of a pain because sometimes you run into clearance issues on the car uh, you had to stretch the springs a little bit but they do work uh, they do work pretty well I ended up I ended up changing you know because I didn't like stretching the springs and having that extra on there I ended up this is an old alpha block but when we were running Argus or Alpha I made a, a restrictor Let's see if I can kind of clean that up a little bit it's a little bit carboned up I made one that just kind of went in it went in a certain way I guess it was this way uh, so I just kind of tap it in there and then it I could use a regular gasket and pipe and but yet it restricted a little bit and we had a pretty good combination I think it was the Argus R8 we ran a couple years, and my son, I ran it too, but my son, he always kind of struggled with mileage a little bit uh, because of the, he's pretty fast, and the the faster guys generally have more trouble with, with run time because they, they're on the throttle so much. I mean, in a qualifier, generally, I'm almost always like one lap, you know, in a five or six minute qualifier, I'm 
one lap under the fast guys. And those, so those guys are covering more ground than we, you know, than I am or anyone that's like an intermediate or, you know, and, and so you, they're covering more ground. They're on the gas more. They're jumping the bigger jumps, you know. So generally the faster guys and even the pros have trouble with mileage. So we had a combination. It was the RSR8. I think I had the exhaust restrictor in. Um, I had a restrictor in the in the crank. I had, had shown in, I think, my modifying video. Restrictor in the crank. Crank timing and everything was like kind of just had a sweet spot on that engine. And that engine, um, generally my son, you know, when we pit a when we pit at a 30 minute main, uh, we'd have to pit right at seven and a half minutes. You go eight and you know one more extra lap and you could run out. Um, but with that with that combination we had, uh, I think I think we were running the zero eight zero one pipe at the time. That en that engine and that combination, even with him you know being pretty trigger happy, really did. Uh, we could generally let everyone pit at seven and a half minutes and we'd go like another two laps maybe a minute minute and a half depending on the lap time and so he what really worked out well was because he had two extra laps all by himself so if he was up up front maybe third place battling when the tall top five were kind of neck and neck um he'd have those two laps by himself and then a, a clear pit lane too because sometimes you know you get guys are close on the track and they all pit at the same time it can be kind of chaotic and cost some time so Having that, having that uh, extra two laps plus um, pitting was was kind of a pitting in you know pit lane all by yourself was a really an advantage, and then you know if you pit two laps after everyone else the next pit stop you can go you know four laps after everyone else, and and then at the end you end up with a four or five minute four or five minutes left to go when you're pitting. And then you're just a, it's just a splash and go. You don't need to worry about getting a full or anything. You just got to enough in there to last four minutes or five minutes. So that was kind of that. That was a good combination we had for a couple of years, and it really worked well. Uh, we were racing a little bit more there, and so my pits were probably my pit stops and me pitting was a little bit better. Um, so one thing that never really took off was this. Alpha made this 2090 pipe. There was another one too. I think a TB1 or something. But this was a fairly popular pipe, and it has a has an exhaust restrictor. Yeah, you know, well, basically the um, the nipple could be replaced. This one's an eight, and you could get um, three different sizes: a seven, I think it was eight, seven, and six and a half, or eight, seven and a half, and seven. I can't remember. There was three sizes, so you could kind of tune at the track with that. This um, the pipe was fairly popular but I, I was surprised no other companies really uh, really took off with it you know and, and copied it or um, did it too this was a good kind of a uh, good mid-range to top end pipe kind of smooth on the bottom it does, this one does have kind of a long header on it but it that was something I, I was surprised never really took off another thing too when we were talking about mileage was I did try RB. I did try, but RB. Um, they're no longer, but RB came out with some re, um, restrictors that were oval shaped. This isn't a very. This one's a little bit of a crude. I did some dremeling on it and stuff, but basically took one of my restrictors that were really small and just slotted it. And the the thinking on that was to have it with the carb slide. So you kind of the oval was this way. So it was more of a linear throttle. Uh, I I tried them before, didn't really like it, and I even just tried one last year. I I don't know, I couldn't find it. It was a nicer one than this one, but uh, I tried it last year. Put it in my I think it was my OS um, Speed uh, Spec Two. I put it in there, and it it kind of I just didn't like it. I don't know. I, it was it tuned funny, and so I, I took it back out and just put. You know six and a half or seven in but that was i don't i don't think really they really took off for rb that that much either it, the the theory on it seems pretty good but so there's different kinds of restrictors and different you know i guess for yourself the only thing 
to do is go to the track and practice and see what kind of restrictor you like. Um, if you're just going for all out power, um, just go the biggest one, you know, eight millimeter or even nine with the, if it's an OS or something. Uh, not always does the restrictor that comes with it the perfect one. Like this six and a half, this Nova Carb came on my my twenty eight that I was gonna put in my speed run and car, and uh, it yeah it came with a six and a half, which seems kind of odd that they had a six and a half restrictor in a twenty eight. It really, to me, uh, someone that buys a twenty eight is going for power, and the six and a half restrictor, you know, it it'd run decent, but. I would definitely go with the eight or the biggest I could get if you're looking for all out power. Well, I think that's about it. That's a, I think that's about all I had to talk about. Uh, like I said, hopefully this is a little bit shorter video. Uh, I got a couple more ideas of videos, but kind of running out of things to do too. If you got some, um, some suggestions, I know there was a couple suggestions, uh, cutaway block and explaining some different stuff and. Um, maybe some of that more involved stuff might be kind of a winter project, but, uh, we, uh, I've been liking the, um, the feedback I've been getting, um, even the negative feedback. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a very good, um, speaker anyways, but I, it's easy for me I mean, it's, when it's a subject that I, I know a lot about and it comes pretty easy because I, I really am passionate about engines and and have a lot of experience with that stuff too so uh, even the negative criticism is not it's just taken as a you know I, I agree <laughs> someone said that you know I say um too much and I agree I would like to not say um so much and uh, but I I'm not that great a speaker and a little bit you know of a shy person or whatever if, in public and stuff so um, I do want to thank everyone for uh, subscribing and stuff i got over a thousand likes in the last uh, week and a half or something so uh, sorry about um ads now i i turned them on just to kind of see what the revenue is like it's it's you know probably because i think you can't take any money out until you hit a hundred dollars so it'd probably be like in a year and a half i can take out a hundred bucks or something but it's not going to be um uh, adding up to too much i don't think but we'll see so I think that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Um, and thanks for all the engines coming in. I've, I've been pretty swamped lately. So thanks for watching.